The Saluki Nation turned out in force at the SIU Arena Saturday when the Creighton Blue Jays came to Carbondale. Both teams were ready to play and traded the lead for much of the contest. Stetson Hairston returned to his old form and made key baskets while contributing his 17 points. Of course, the entire team stepped up and did what was necessary for the dogs to come out on top. It's been said the Valley Championship comes through Carbondale, but as Creighton proved on Saturday, every team is going to make sure the trip isn't easy. Stetson Harrison says that the Missouri Valley Conference Championship runs through Carbondale, but the Salukis would love a road win tonight. Good evening, everyone. I'm Mike Trude. Brandon Moore's alongside. Greg Armstrong will join us a little bit later as the Salukis are on the road up here in Normal to take on Illinois State University. The Salukis looking for their 21st win of the year. More importantly, a win keeps them at least in a share of first place with Wichita, Brandon. Yeah, and just as Stetson said, the Valley Championship does come through Southern, but they've got to handle their business on the road. we got a tough game here tonight at Redburn Arena and they've got to come down and handle business and it's going to be up to the seniors to take care of that for them. Illinois State has this is the last game of a three game homestand. They lost the first two so they've got some fire in their eyes. All of a sudden the luster on their program the last couple of weeks has dimmed a little bit. Yeah just a little bit but they're still right there and they're at eight and six in the conference and they're in there with uh, Northern Iowa and SMS. Well, SMS dropped one last night but they're still right there and they're like you said they're trying to beat and not play that playing game on Friday for the Missouri Valley Conference. The Salukis won the first battle between these two teams by 12 back in Carbondale forcing a slew of turnovers. Yeah a lot of turnovers and a couple key runs were really what won that game for the dogs and bad free throw shooting there by the Redbirds. It's the Salukis and Illinois State Redbirds from Bloomington. Brandon and I will be back with the starting lineups when we come back right after this. Welcome back to Redbird Arena. Remind you that support for this program comes from First Cellular of Southern Illinois by Old National Bank, the Southern Illinois Collegiate Common Market, Vogler Motor Company, Banterra Bank, Gentry Couch Insurance and Investments, 710 Bookstore and the Saluki Connection, and by your area Anheuser-Busch distributors, B&G Benigoni Distributing, Golden Eagle Distributing, and Benigoni RL Distributing, LLC, and SI Cosmetic and Family Dentistry. It's the Salukis and Redbirds from Redbird Arena. Let's get to the starting lineups. First for the visitors from Southern Illinois with a record of 20 and 6 and 11 and 3 in the Missouri Valley Conference. It'll be Brooks, Tatum, Warren, Hairston, and Shaw, three of the seniors. Out of the four will be the starters tonight. And Southern is starting to play basketball like it normally does down the stretch this late in the year. Yeah, and that starts with the defense, Mike. So expect for the Salukis to come out and play some great defense. But on the other side of the ball, the ISU Redbirds play some pretty good defense themselves. And for Illinois State, they've lost two in a row. They've only lost two in a row once this year, and it's been the last two games. They will go with Lorenzo Gordon and Greg Dillegard up, up front. Vince Green, Tay Gridley, and Greg Alexander will be the guards. Lorenzo Gordon, the, the junior college transfer, looked at a bunch of Valley programs before transferring to Illinois State. He's been as good as advertised. Yeah, he's playing good, leading the Redbirds in scoring, and he's going to be a handful tonight. I'm sure that Matt Shaw will draw the draw the matchup when he, uh, at the beginning of the game. He's been putting up a lot of points and uh, doing a lot of rebounding, so he's going to be a load for the dogs this evening. Gordon will see a lot of double teaming if he gets the ball down low in the post. Support for Saluki basketball is brought to you in part by our good friends at First Cellular. We mentioned Lorenzo Gordon. He's coming in averaging 17.3 points a game. That is uh, tops in the Missouri Valley Conference this year. And what, what makes him so good 
is his post moves down low. Yeah, he's got the size, and he's got, like you said, the post moves. He's just a good all-around basketball player. And like I said, when he gets down low, he gets those easy shots for himself and creates space for himself. So it makes him a tough guard down the post. There's a good look at the Salukis. Matt Shaw, number 32. Josh Warren, number 21. Senior Stetson Harrison had a great game against Creighton last Saturday, and we look for him to continue that play as we go along down the stretch. Yeah, and you can tell with Stetson, he's kind of realizing that, hey, I'm starting to count my games down. You know, I, I, my senior year is coming to winding down. I've been here too long to, to play the way I've been playing this season, you know, up and down. So you can see that he's really asserting himself on both ends, defense and offense, and he really wants to go out on top as a senior year. Salukis beat the Redbirds by 12 back in Carbondale, December 23rd. So it's been almost two months since these two teams have seen each other. Both teams have gone through a couple of different transitions during that time. Illinois State got pretty hot at one time and was on a roll to possibly finish in the top three in the league. And then the last two ball games had Wichita State and Northern Iowa in here, not in that order, and lost both games. Yeah, they lost both games, and uh, that's their longest lo losing streak of the season, those two games. But is any, is any time with that rematch game, just as we saw with SMS not too long ago, when you play a team that you've lost early in the season, you're going to come out and give it your all, and they've got their home fans behind them. So expect for a good game here, good Valley basketball. Saluki head coach Chris Lowry adjusting his tie before we get things underway. He's flanked by Rodney Watson and Shane Hawkins. Jack Owens also is alongside as well. We are about ready to tip things off. Saluki's in there maroon with black and white trim. It'll be Dillegard jumping with Matt Shaw. Look at Matt Shaw get up and win the tip. Something the Salukis have not done a lot of this year is win that opening tip. And Illinois State starts out in a zone defense. Southern worked on a zone a lot the last couple days and practiced yesterday at the Hoobin Center in Champaign and then again at the shoot around earlier today here at Redbird Arena. And one thing with the zone, as, as, as always, is a staple of the zone. You've got to attack the zone. You've got to try to jump in those seams and look for those kickouts to the open man. Brooks, short jumper, nobody got him off the boards. He got one rebound, but could not corral the second one. Gidry for three, no. Mr. Gidry tried to dial him up early on. 144 threes on the season for Trey Gidry. He hits him at about a 33% clip. Brooks back to Josh Warren. In transition, Illinois State's forced to play man, so Southern goes into their motion offense. Yeah, and the Salukis would much rather have the Redbirds play man-to-man -man defense on them all night. They, they thrive a little better in the man-to-man. -man. Great shot there by Darren Brooks. Creates his own shot with the step back and gets the early basket. I like the fact that Gidry draws Brooks on the man-to-man. -man. I don't think that'll happen all the time, but we will see. Foul on Lorenzo Gordon. Wow, quick one underneath. You're right, the hook. So Southern will take it out of bounds. Yeah, and, and with Darren hitting that first jump shot, they're really going to set the tone. He's, his, his offense hasn't really been there. Of course, he was sick last week, but he hits that early jump shot early on, so it could be a key to him having a good offensive night. Got to like that. Shaw, yes. And they caught him there in the man-to-man -man, a little bit on the switch. Tatum with the laser pass there gets Shaw down in the middle and he gets the easy layup. Redbird's going to be in trouble if they switch up top on the guards the way they did the first two possessions. Gidry. Reverse, no. That's Lorenzo Gordon. Lorenzo. Just like we talked about in the pregame, that's Lorenzo Gordon, like you said, down there on the block. Great offensive rebound and good putback for him. Not a monster by any stretch, but 6'7", very physical. Yeah, good size in the valley, though. Around here at 6'7", at that size, good size in the valley. They're sticking with the man-to-man -man defense. Tatum to Josh, right into Matt Shaw again. Oh, Stetson! Follows it. Wow. Yeah, Shaw missed it, but uh, Stetson there to follow it up. But I like the way the Salukis are playing early on. They're really attacking, as in past games where they've been kind of complacent on the outside, kind of just passing it around. First three possessions, they're really attacking the ISU defense. It's 6 2 early on. Gidry splits the double team, and they call a late foul against Darren. As you can see, Gidry's really pumped up for the game. He had the early three, he drove to the basket with the reverse, split the double team there, so you can see he's ready for action tonight. No points yet, but you can see he's in tune. 
That's Greg Alexander, number two, did not see any action in the first game, was nursing a sprained ankle. And he gives them toughness that they didn't have in that first game. And that's one of the reasons why they turned it over 20 sometimes. Gordon on the post. Blocked by Josh Warren. And Matt Shaw gets it. Jump ball and it'll go to Illinois State, but that's great hustle early on by Shaw and a good block by Josh Warren. Yeah, good energy from the dog. As we say, they're playing good on the offensive end, great energy, and great energy on the defensive end. So I'm sure this is the way that Coach Lowry wants him to come out and play. Good shot of Chris, of course, 20 wins in his first season. Second behind Ray Giacolotti at Utah. Yeah, can't complain about that. Not at all. Shot clock did not start anew. So it's down to 10. Dillegard. Green fade away jumper. Yes. That's a nice shot there by Vince Green. Shot clock's running down. He creates his own shot. Kind of looks like what Jamal Tatum does when the shot clock runs down for the Salukis. Stetson draws the foul. Is that two on Gordon early? No, we're going to call that on Dillegard. Yeah, a little bit of home cooking. They're not going to give Gordon those too early on. A good drive there by Stetson. Like to see that from him early on. He's hit 24 out of his last 25 free throws in Missouri Valley Conference play. Yeah, so this is a good place for him to be. And again, when you're when you're looking to get those those points on the board, you get those early games where you can get some free throws. He misses his first one there. And when you can get to the free throw line and put an easy one in, makes the basket a little bigger for you when you go to shoot. 83 percenter. Yeah, 28 of his 30 free throws this season. Got the second one. Suki's lead it by three, seven, four. Green working on Tatum. Yeah, that's a fun matchup there. Two feisty guys, Vince Green and Jamal Tatum guarding each other. Gidry, high, Arker, no, rebound to Stetson. Southern wants to run. See what they can do in transition. Tatum splits it, finds Shaw for a flush. Nice, nice split of the double team there by Jamal, and that creates the draw of the defense and finds the open man, Matt Shaw, for the flush. Jamal with a push against Vince Green. First foul on Jamal Tatum. We've come to our first media timeout of the first half. 15.57 left to go in the first half. Saluki's lead it. It's 9-4 early here at Redbird Arena. Greg Armstrong is our man on the sidelines tonight. Good evening, Greg. How's it going, guys? Tonight, Southern Illinois will be looking to keep looking to keep their success in the uh, in the Redbird Arena. They've won nine. That's the most out of any Redbird opponent. But they have lost eight here. They're nine and eight overall. But they do have the most. They'll be looking to keep that success tonight. All right, Greg. Sorry for the cameraman jumping right in your way, but hey, live TV, folks. <laughs> Wasn't even our cameraman. <laughs> the cameraman on the other cameraman. <laughs> Lamar Owen. And Randall Falker have come into the Saluki lineup. And one thing of note is that the Salukis, of course, we know that they've got the great deep bench. They come off the bench with a good four players. The starting five for the Redbirds are blogging a lot of minutes, almost 30 minutes of a game for all five starters. So that could become a, 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 a uh, actually, they put in some, some uh, substitutions now. Can't give Gidry that three. The floater, he hits this one. Hey, Neil Plank and Dana Ford are the guys into the lineup now for the Redbirds. It's 9-6, the Salukis. Stetson blows by Plank. Finds Tatum wide open for a three. No, Falker gets the board. Salukis are owning the board so far in this game. Yeah, that's a good sign for them early on, rebounding. Jamal with it. To Stetson. 22 on the shot clock, not a problem, not a factor. Ten on the clock. Brooks to Tatum. Another wide open three. Jamal Tatum. Jamal Tatum, Tatum, number 52 of the year. Tatum has been shooting the three pointers at a great clip this season. I want to say he's up there in the uh, high 40s. Green. Soft trouble going into Randall Falker. He pulled it back out. Plank comes around to the other side to Dana Ford. He's from Tams, Illinois. Tony Young can't wait to get at Vince Green. Green penetrates.
kicks it back out to Ford. Nice follow. Ronnie Carwell with the follow for two. Yeah, Ronnie Carwell's a big guy, and he can, he can do that at 6'10". Twelve eight, dogs lead by four. Darren Brooks turns it over. And Gidry turns it right back. Yeah, that's a good hustle there by the Salukis. Looked like the uh, Redbirds would have had an easy layup there, but they all hustled back on defense and were able to break up that pass. Tony Young and Mike Dale into the game. Stetson, Jamal. Stetson and Jamal Tatum sit down. Khalif Ford is into the game for Illinois State for Vince Green. And Greg Alexander is back in. Replacing Trey Guidry. Back to the man to man. A lot of space up there. Darren gets a couple guys in the air. And now we'll pull up and miss it badly. Stetson had the rebound. Couldn't corral it. No, it was Mike Dale, rather. Good shot there by Darren, but the Redsbirds were flying at him. He pump faked the first guy, got a little move on him, got a little space for himself, but the defense was there. He wasn't able to get a good look at the basket. 12 8's the score. So the Salukis with Young, Dale, Falker, Owen, and Darren Brooks. That's Ford with it. Around to Dana Ford. Not that time, Carwell. Yeah. <laughs> Boy, he can get up. Yeah, at 16, like I was saying, he's right there once he puts his arms up. Down to Randall Falker. Kicks it out to Tony. Traveling. Intimidation fact there on Falker. He's got to get it. And he's got to go power up to the basket. Even if he gets the foul, he takes it there. But, but you can't you can't delay and get that extra dribble in there. Your defense gets a chance to set up. Yeah. Even if he blocks it, you got to take it to him. You got to show him yeah. that you're going to be aggressive. And I think he's coming out right now. Josh in, Falker out, yeah. and he's going to get talked to on the bench. Yeah. And I'm sure that's what they'll let him know. Hey, when you get the ball down low, you got to power it up. Try to put it in. And he's got the ability to power it down when he gets it down low. So. Should be no excuses for that. Ford tripped on Tony, and there's the reach in foul. 13 foul on the Salukis. 12 53 left to go here in the half. Yeah, I got a chance to talk to Tony earlier in the week. And he was saying he loves coming in and guarding these little quick guards who think they can speed by him. Puts his body on him and just loves to D him up. We'll hear from Tony at halftime. Swing it to Ford. And early on, it seems like Coach Porter Moser has really gone to his bench, a la the Salukis, and it seems like he's got to match that depth that they have. Alexander, no, but Plank right there to follow him. So they're back within two. It's 12 10. Dale stripped from behind and a foul on Ford. Quick hands, not quick enough. Not quick enough. Good defense there by the Redbirds. Gidry coming in for Dana Ford. Fans are starting to fill in here at the Redbird Arena. Still not to capacity. Of course, they got the upper bowl, but they're starting to pack it in on the lower half. How can you miss this good action tonight? I wouldn't want to miss it. They may get 7,000 here tonight, 7,500 maybe. Tony Young for two. Nice pass. Yeah, that's a good cut there by Tony. Finds the seam in the defense. Good pass by Brooks. Finishes it off with the easy layup. Kick it out to Gidry. Tony again. And a guy like Gidry with that three-point ability, when he gets the ball out there, you've got to run at him because he's got the ability to put it up. 11.52 to go in the first half. The Salukis still on top of the Redbirds here in Bloomington. It's Southern Illinois 14, Redbirds 10. We'll be right back.
with Brandon Moore and Greg Armstrong, Mike Trude back at Redbird Arena. The Salukis leading at 14 to 10. We've got 11.52 left to go in the half. Support for Saluki basketball is brought to you by our good friends at First Cellular. This program is also brought to you by the Marion Cultural and Civic Center, presenting the new Gershwin musical, My One and Only. 7.30, Tuesday, February 22nd at the new Marion Cultural and Civic Center. Ticket information at the box office or by phone at 618-997-4030. And WSIU Television has been the only consistent local free over-the-air source for these games for several years. It's member support that makes it all happen. Call now, 1-800-745-9748. Salukis have two home games left on the schedule. A week from tonight against Northern Iowa, there are around 3,000 tickets remaining for that basketball game. And then Wichita State will visit on Saturday of next week as well. There are less than 200 tickets remaining for that basketball game on sale to the general public. So act now. Don't miss these guys in action. Get your tickets for Saluki basketball. Well, fans are looking at that game as a potential clincher right there in the valley. Trey Guidry's down. Don't know if he came down on somebody's foot. Looks like he hit his head. Everybody jumped up at one time. I didn't see how or who he landed on. Yeah, it looks like a head injury. He's got sure. his bell rung a little bit. He's got to come off the floor. Early on, some Missouri Valley Conference scores. Wichita trails Creighton 5 to 4, 15 12 left to go in the half. Northern Iowa leads Drake 6 to 2 at the 17 minute mark. And of course, this one is now. 14 to 10 in favor of the Salukis. Anyekdu comes on number three for Gidry. Plank to the corner. Alexander. Butterfingers on the rebound. Out to Alexander to the corner. Onekyu way short. Yeah, good arc, but way short on. Lorenzo follows him. Yeah, Lorenzo Gordon right there on the offensive rebound, just as he did in the first game against the Salukis. Gonna have to box him out, put a body on him. Matt Shaw is gonna come back in to do just that. Stetson for three, no. Plank with the board. They've got numbers if they make it work. Oh, Lamar almost had the steal, did knock it out of bounds. Yeah, Plank telegraphed that pass there, set it up, then bounced it in there. Lamar was able to get in there, read the passing lane, and knock it out. Sean Brooks in for Owen and Mike Dale. Yeah, just talking about Lorenzo Gordon there on the offensive rebounds. This guy's collected 73 offensive rebounds this season. He's got 50 off, 51 now offensive rebounds, comparison to 50 defensive rebounds. So he's definitely a, a problem on both ends of the glass. Down low to Gordon. No rebound to Matt Shaw. Greg Alexander wanted to travel, didn't get the call. Lob it to Shaw. Matt scores. Yeah. Two for Matt, and you can easily see why he's becoming. And a technical on Porter Mosier. Didn't like it at the other end when Gordon didn't get a call. Didn't like the non-travel call against Darren Brooks. And after the easy lob to Matt Shaw, Porter Mosier gets a technical foul. Trying to fire his team up. Yeah, that's one thing about Coach Mosier. You know that he's going to get involved with the game. He's going to do his best to get his troops revved up for the game. And talk to the refs a little bit. Get him to see things his way. Stetson hits the free throw. As you can see, Coach Lowry over there. Hit them both. So he handed the Salukis two more points. It's 18 to 12. And Illinois State basketball, because the technical came with Illinois State having possession, you don't lose the possession anymore the way you used to. And I think that's 
That's been around for two years now. That's a very, very good rule. Yeah, very good rule, yeah. You're already and penalizing the team once. Two. You don't need to have double jeopardy. Yeah, and you can see Mr. Gidry checking back into the game. A tough competitor. You knew he wasn't going to be out for long. No, and maybe he wouldn't have shaved his head. <laughs> wouldn't have hurt so much. But he shaved his head several games ago and had 30 points, I think, against Northern Iowa and has uh, shaved it ever since. Yeah, I guess he's just ready, ready for battle look. Here comes the double team. There it is. And they called the foul that time on Matt or Josh. And yeah. it'll be Matt. Yeah, you can pretty much take your pick on that one. But you can see with Gordon, he's going to force the action. He gets the ball down there on the block. No matter what, he's going to say, hey, you guys got to stop me. I'm going to take it right to you. Matt's got to get his foot out of bounds, though, and use the baseline as his friend. You'll see it here. Didn't quite get there and didn't really body him all that much. Yeah, but it but, was enough. Yeah, just enough to get that foul called as uh, Gordon drops that first free throw there. 18-13, just under 10 minutes left to go in the first half. Glad you're with us tonight on WSIU-TV. It's our last broadcast of the year. And we hope you enjoyed them. They all haven't been winners. You can hear the guy behind us tell us, shoot it. <laughs> <laughs> Shaw with it out high to Josh Warren. Yeah, so Stetson coming off a big pick, wide open three. No. Brooks got fouled by Gil Dillegard. How is that not a foul? Southern will keep possession, yeah, but how is that not a foul? Yeah, as we said, Coach Porter Mosier likes to get in the refs here, and it seems like he may have influenced the past couple of calls. That looked like it was a big deal as a replay. DB gets hit from both sides. Hard to see why that's not a foul, but. Keep on playing. Matt with it. Back to the corner. Darren's wide open. Floater, no. Good rebound there by They've Gidry. got transition. Gidry. Yeah, well that's, a, that's a good fast break right there. Gidry gets it out, runs it, hits it to Gordon. No dribbles, passing right back to get the easy layup. And both Darren and Stetson got caught on the baseline on the offensive uh, flow that time. Yeah, they weren't able to get back. Shaw. Oh, Matt, you've got to finish those shots. Right there. Yeah, nice basket there by Duke. He gets it there on the break, draws the defense, comes right to the basket for the easy layup. Matt's going to get 20 points if he will hit the bunnies tonight. Yeah, you can hear this Redbird Arena picking up, trying to get themselves involved in the game. Nice basket here with Deflate that. A three from Tatum, short. Here they come, three on one again. Green. Willard under the basket. That's the second putback dunk of the evening. But you, you see that the Slukies have got to put some bodies on to people. They're giving up easy offensive rebounds, easy putbacks. And they're getting the dribble penetration, but then they're not rotating back on the uh, defensive end. So Illinois State's getting a lot of fast break points. Yeah. And now they've tied it up at 20. Yeah, I'm sure, I'm sure Coach Lowry will try to share that up. As you see him over in the sideline there, he goes to look at the replay. Vince Green misses the layup. But Mr. Dillegard says, I'll send that one home for you. Don't worry about it, buddy. Illinois State has the score on their scoreboard, 19 to 18 in favor of Illinois State. And it looks so like we we'll go with that. Illinois State 19, the Salukis 18. We've got 22, uh, we've got 2019 here. Somebody's got it wrong. There we go. <laughs> 8-12 left to go, just ahead of immediate timeout. Yeah, but just like you were saying, Mike, with the penetration that the Salukis are getting against the defense, they're not having that man that's back to be able to get back and play play defense. So Coach Lowry has got to assign somebody to say, hey, you've got to be our, our last safety man just in case they get the run out. You've got to be able to get back on defense. Can't give up layups. And when Matt gets it down low, go ahead and dunk it. You can make free throws, so draw the foul and... Go to the hoop with authority. Yeah, we might as well because they're doing it against us. There's the double team. Ten on the shot clock. Jamal off the screen to Josh. Six on the shot clock. Matt's got to take it in. 
two on the shot clock. Two seconds. That looks like Matt had the move that he wanted, just lost the ball, was able to gain control of it again. And we've come to another media timeout. 7.38 left to go in the half. Illinois State now in the lead. 19-18 Redbirds. Let's take it over to our man on the sidelines, Greg Armstrong. Greg. All right, guys, Darren Brooks already has two assists tonight. If he gets one more, he'll move into the tie for fourth all time with the Saluki's career assist total. But two guys ahead of him, assistant coach Shane Hawkins and head coach Chris Lowry. So he has some, uh, has some moving up to do. There's a good shot of Chris. Rodney Watson on your right as you're looking at the picture and Shane Hawkins on the left. And Saluki basketball with two seconds left on the shot clock. Yeah, that, that, that this, is, this is where they like to go for Matt on a lob. We'll see what happens. The referee's going to go in there and clean things up a little bit, hey guys. A little bit of a scrum going yeah. on. <laughs> a little bit of a rugby <laughs> scrum. <laughs> Gotta get the ball in. And he got a timeout, and that old Saluki bugaboo can't get the ball in bounds. Yeah, and that's something that'll drive coaches crazy. You come out of a timeout, set something up, and you're not able to execute. You got to call another timeout. It was a huge bottleneck along the free throw uh, lane area and nobody was able to break loose and you have to cut hard and that's uh, that's something that they practiced earlier today was hard cuts on the out of bounds plays didn't work itself out that time there's Porter Mosier the excitable coach from Illinois State via Arkansas Little Rock he did a great job at Little Rock and now he's at Illinois State in his second year and he is uh, overall Doing very, very well as a head coach. 80 and 61 in his career, 26 and 27 here at ISU. Jamal up, firing. No. Stetson fights for the rebound, but Vince Green runs it down. To Gidry, wide open three. Mr. Trey Gidry, you can tell when he put that one up, that one was going to go in. Good arc, good rotation on the ball there. Four point lead for the Redbirds now. Stetson, no, rebound to Shaw. Yes. Matt with the offensive board, he's got eight. Yeah, and you're you easily, you're becoming to see, you're coming to see why Matt Shaw leads the Salukis in field goal percentage. Gets a lot of those bunnies down under the basket and converts them. Missed one earlier, but puts that one in. Vince Alexander back to Gidry three no over the back Salukis keep the basketball Jerry Pollard on the call 22 20 Illinois State Brooks in for Tony Young they don't want Tony to get his third foul guard Gidry yeah Mr. Gidry gives a look to the ref to say hey ref there's Shaw on that Offensive rebound and follow. Yeah, nice left hand put back there. A bucket ties the game. Matt down low, traveling. I don't know, I wasn't able to see Josh's feet there. It looked like he did a little slide back into him before he set into his move. Lorenzo Gordon back in. Carwell sits down. Neil Plank coming back in. For Dillegard. Illinois State going small at this time with their tallest player, Lorenzo Gordon at 6'7. Tatum now guarding Khalif Ford, who came in for Vince Green. Gordon down low. Way out to Alexander for three. No. Josh with the rebound. Yeah. Their inability to hit wide open threes is cost them from having a big lead in this one. Yeah, but you can see the effect Gordon has, has down low. He draws that double team and gets a wide open look for his guy Alexander on the three point line. Shaw to Brooks. Jamal wide open from three. No. Good position by Neil Plank. So look who's gone a little bit cold from the outside. Down to Gordon. Boy, it looked like Warren hammered in. No call. But Gordon didn't say anything, so apparently just missed the shot. Tatum, pull up. No. Brooks gets the board to 
That's a yes. Stetson hurts them. Yeah, Stetson's able to put that layup in. Good start for Stetson. I think that's his seventh point of the evening. Lukies have tied the game up. 22-22 with five minutes and 13 seconds left in the first half. Stetson does have seven. Yeah, so it's, it's great to see him picking up his play. As we said, you can see he's counting down those games in his senior season. He's really playing good basketball towards the tail end of the Valley season. Shot clock down to 10. Ford. To Plank. Shaw with an elbow. That's two on Matt. So, so 16 foul on the Salukis. 4.54 left, so the referees, for the most part, letting them play tonight. And Illinois State playing a lot of zone. There's not going to get called for a lot of fouls. Owen and Dale and Falker back in now. Yeah, Chris joined. Lowry keeping some fresh legs in there, isn't he? Yeah, and they joined Tatum and Darren Brooks. 22 all. Down low to Lorenzo. Kick it way out to Gidry. Pull up. Jumper. Yes. Yeah, good defense there, but better offense. Gidry good got shot nine. there by Gidry. He's got a nice bounce in his step this evening all over the court. He plays hard. 24-22, Illinois State in the lead. Brooks on the corner. Stripped from behind by Vince Green. Southern will keep it with 11 on the shot clock. And, and what I think the Salukis have to do when they're getting that ball against it, they're, they're driving, they're beating that first man. But when they get past them, they've got to take, they've got to settle for that in-between jump shot. They get too far into the lane, and they're running into the big ISU defenders under the basket. Give them one or two dribbles, and you take that mid-range shot. Mike Dale's got it. Passes it to well, it's called for the charge. Mike trying to do too much with the basketball. A little bit too much. But again, that's another case of it. When you beat that first man. Pull up the, and hit the jump shot. Yeah, the ISU defenders are stepping in. You've got to take that in-between jump shot. Can't go all the way in. you got to stop in, either kick it out or take that jump shot there. And that's the art of a lost 12-footer. Because <laughs> right there, he could have pulled up. Yeah. But Alexander took a good charge. Yeah, no one probably hit that one. 24-22. Illinois State has not turned it over very much in this game. Alexander wide open. No. Can't buy a three. Can't make that one. He was cocked and loaded, ready to shoot it, but he couldn't hit his target. Brooks. No. Tatum with the rebound. And it's back tied up, 24 all. Offensive rebounds have kept the Salukis in this one. Yeah, good first half of basketball. Both teams missing some easy shots, missing some open looks. Gidry. Nope. Tatum again. Jamal crashing the boards. He only averages two a game. He's got his two. Coach, I'm done. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just let me shoot. 3.04 left to go ahead of immediate timeout. Saluki is looking to recapture the lead. Offense a little stagnant right now. Yeah, and one thing they can't do is get stagnant or complacent out here on the on the offensive end, just dribbling around the horn. They got to still attack. Brooks. Falker's got to shoot it. He does, and he scores. Good, good aggressive move. Of course, it came because he had to do it, but good aggressive move there by Falker. Oh, Plank wanted to shoot it. Pulls up it and shoots the short one, but misses. Everybody's hesitating on that shot, Brandon. They don't want to. They want to. Don't want to pull the trigger. Everybody wants to get it in the lane, in the lane, in the lane. In the lane or the three ball. And usually, when you get in the the lane, you a crowd appears out of nowhere. <laughs> Dale to Tatum. Jamal's got to get out of the lane. Stripped. Walker with it. Back to Lamar. Lefty, no. How did Brooks come up with that? And he, nice he thought he got fouled. And no foul called on that play either. And we'll go to another media timeout. 147 left to go in the half. Folks, they're letting them play tonight. Salukis lead it 26-24. 
26 24 SIU in the lead just a minute 47 left to go in the first half and the guys in the striped shirts are letting them play tonight. Yeah well sometimes that's a problem but sometimes you can't complain you say hey, if the refs are going to not call it on one end because it obviously looked like the Saluki's got fouled then uh, Trey Gidry comes down and he obviously gets fouled but hey you like it when it's balanced like that if you're not going to call it don't call it on either end. Nothing happened to Darren Brooks on the offensive end and Gidry got a look like he got killed by Lamar Owen or Randall Falker and no foul called. So 30 seconds on the shot clock. Here we go. Gidry on Brooks. Trey, where's he going? He's traveling with no call. <laughs> How many steps does he get to take? And Chris Lowry says that went off of Illinois State too. But the Redbirds keep it 22 on the shot clock. Gidry up. No rebound to Randall. Good rebound there by Randall. Salukis will get at least two possessions before this half ends. Yeah, what started off as a offensive early few minutes it's kind of slowed down. The defenses have both set in. Both teams struggling to get baskets now. 12 on the shot clock. Give the ball to Darren. Here we go. Six on the clock. Gets green up in the air and scores. Darren Brooks. Darren Brooks for two. He's got four the, points. And both that's of them. the mid range jump shot we were talking about. When you beat that first man, you've got to take that shot. Darren Brooks takes it, steps right into it, and nails it. Illinois State could get a two for one now as well if they can get a quick shot off. Ooh, Lamar wanted to. To get a steal there. Look at Gordon. Oh, nice steal by Darren Brooks. Falker goes down hard. Southern will hold it. They lead by four. About an eight second difference. The shot clock and the game clock. And with that last steal, Darren Brooks is just moving his name on the Saluki record book. He's already got the Saluki single season record for steals in the season. 75 and counting. Lamar, 16 footer waist. Oh, he banked it in. He banked it in. <laughs> yeah, he doesn't bank out here in Bloomington. <laughs> and Chris Lowry smiles as Lamar comes back to the huddle, but it's still a six point edge, 30 to 24 on that one. And the Redbirds have 10 seconds to try to cut into this uh, deficit. And I look for them for some dribble penetration to a, a Gidry or an Alexander to try to close the half with a three and a little momentum. Yeah, like I said, both teams are playing good, but the Lucas have just similar to the last game. And, you, and Coach Moser talked about that. They played good, but then towards the end of the half, the Salukis went on a run on them, opened it up on them, and the same thing that's happening here. Both teams played pretty even, but the Salukis have opened up a six-point lead. As you look at the replay, there, there's Lamar, and he says, hey, can I bank that in? Hey, I'll take it. <laughs> Southern's had good luck with bank shots this year. Josh Warren at the uh, buzzer against Southwest Missouri State to win that game, and Lamar hitting this one to get things going the right direction towards halftime. Here comes Gidry. Spinning, spinning, jump hook, no, rebound to Mike Dale. One second left, Stetson lets it fly. He did get it off the backboard, and Southern with good defense. The last minute 50 of this basketball game has turned a two-point deficit into a six-point lead, and they lead it at halftime by the score of 30 to 24. A good, good half of basketball by the Salukis, and as soon as uh, the team walks by, Greg Armstrong is going to get Chris Lowry. Greg, if you've got Chris, go ahead. All right, I'm down on the sidelines with Chris Lowry. Now, uh, Coach, in that first half, you held uh, you held uh, Gordon, their big main score, leading score in the Valley. What did you do to key on him in the first half? So we just tried to make it tough on every time he caught the basketball. Um, our guys did a good job in rotation. Now, there's been a lot of no calls on both sides of the ball. You think that's going to be advantageous to your defense, or it might hurt your offense? Well, I hope it helps our defense, you know, because we play physical, we play tough, so it, it obviously helped in the first half. All right, good luck in the second half, Coach. Thank you very much, Greg. It's 30 to 24. The Salukis on top over the Redbirds. Southern won by 12 in Carbondale. They're on their way right now, leading by six. It's 30 to 24. We'll be back with all of our halftime information for you right after this. All right, let's take a look at the first half stats from this basketball game. Salukis lead it by six. Field goal percentage, 41 to 34 percent right now is where it's tallied up. 
three point percentage 13 percent and 11 percent. That's pretty telling right now The Illinois State has uh, missed a lot of wide open ones and the Salukis have had theirs challenged pretty well. Free throws not really a factor turnovers five and four for each team but you know this game is as close as it as it looks really yeah. on the screen with the uh, six point difference right now Brandon. Yeah pretty evenly matched first half as you can see the only difference is obviously the score and uh, shooting percentage the dog shooting forty two percent red bird shooting thirty four percent that's probably that six point difference but the game could easily be on the other side of things ISU could easily be up six points so six points not that much of a difference can be easily be made up by the red birds and uh, the dogs you know the dogs need to go ahead and hold on and uh, continue to insert themselves All right. beginning of this second half. We are set to go to start the second half both teams with their same starting lineups that started the basketball game and the Salukis lead it by six it's 30 to 24 Alexander to Dilligard draws the foul from Josh Warren and Dilligard will go to the free throw line and that's not necessarily a bad thing if you're a Saluki fan to see the pass there by Dillard. He passed it into the post. Good dive to the basket on the cut. The Lukies need to go ahead and watch that and get some good dives on their own. Foul there by Warren, as you see on the replay. Dillard hits free throws uh, 30 percent, 21 out of 69 for the season. And when he shot that one, you can tell why he shoots it at 30 percent. He short arms it a little bit. Look at those free throws. 97 for 152. <laughs> I, I would hate to call that a shooter's bounce at 30 percent but that's what he got on that one. So they cut in the lead it's now a five point game. And it looks like the Redbirds are back into that zone that they started the game in but didn't play much of in the first half. Three two. Stetson has it down to Josh in the corner. Shaw working on Lorenzo Gordon up short Tatum able to corral the rebound will try a three and he hits it. Yeah that wasn't more so out of the offense but just a broken up play Tatum gets it in the corner and is able to put it up eight point lead now for Southern but it's because it was kept alive on the offensive rebounds Green penetrates kicks it to Gidry. Gordon has been held to five points. Southern's done a great job on him. Alexander. Short rebound to Shaw. Southern in transition. Not much happening there. Illinois State in the man defense now. Brooks back to Shaw. Back to Darren. 18 footer. Yes. Yeah, good unselfish play there by the Salukis. Porter Man. Mosier takes a timeout. It's going to be a full timeout. The first timeout of the second half is always a full timeout. And Southern has started off like it did the first half and leads by 10. Yeah, hits its first two shots. Makes you feel real good coming out starting that second half. A real unselfish play right there on the last play. Matt obviously had the shot. He pump fakes, get past his man. One extra pass. Darren Brooks is wide open for the easy jump shot. I want to remind our fans back home that Two more home games remain Wednesday next Wednesday against Northern Iowa and then the following Saturday against Wichita State only about 3000 tickets remain for the Northern Iowa game and about less than 200 tickets remain for the home game with Wichita State coming up a week from Saturday the Salukis are on the road Saturday at uh, Kent State in the bracket buster and Ken has lost two straight games so that game is losing a little bit of its luster but it also means if the Salukis would go there and not play well it it could have an adverse effect to what the bracket buster is all about. Right like I said that bracket buster is usually a chance to showcase your team get a quality win if you're able to get it but with Kent State losing it's past two like I said kind of loses its luster but I guarantee if the Salukis get that win they'll still consider it a quality win for them. national television appearance so I'm sure they're going to come out and they should be able to get that game. Jamal Tatum had a three pointer in the first half and after corralling the offensive tip he hits his first three pointer of the second half. Love the way that man squares up on a shot. Yeah he's probably the best pure shooter that the Salukis have and he's actually ranking only only his second season obviously but he's fourth in SIU all time with 40 percent clip from the three point line. So you like to see it when he lines it up because he's got a good shot at making it. Darren Brooks has four assists in this basketball game. He passes Sterling Mahan in the all-time Saluki 
list. Serling is a Hall of Famer, was inducted a couple of seasons ago. And DB now just climbing up the record books all over the place. Yeah, DB has got his name tattooed all over the Saluki's record book. And in this season, he's leading him in points, rebounds, steals, and assists. What more can you ask from, from the guy? See what the Redbirds do down by 10. Gidry with it. Gidry's got to get a little help from his guys on offense. He's been the only one really putting up, putting up some numbers early on. Kick it back to Alexander. Boy, I thought Gidry might take that scissor cut and go to the basket, but he didn't. He'll pop up a long three and miss it. And we got a scrum, and Tatum got it and called timeout. And Porter Mosier doesn't like that call either. And Chris Lowry calls the timeout via Jamal Tatum. That's Southern's third timeout, so they've got two remaining left in the basketball game. This will be a 30. Southern would have had the ball on the alternate possession, yeah. Um, but yeah, at times when you're in the middle of that scrum, you're all, those, yeah, that. all those things they'll go ahead and say, hey, we want to keep the ball, so they go ahead and call that timeout. All right. And, yeah, just one thing of note on the defense, Salukis are doing a good job on Trey Guidry as he is the leading scorer for the Redbirds, but they're doing a good job making him work for all the baskets that he's getting and just trying to find his open teammates. He's working really hard out there. Salukis, Without question. Salukis playing good defense on him. And nothing's come easy to Gordon tonight either. Shaw, back out to Stetson. To Darren, 15 on the shot clock. Got Jamal. Some. Got to get some spacing there. Look like they're in a little bit of a cluster. Ten on the shot clock. Jamal, no. Called for the charge. Yeah, that's one of those calls there that can go either way. Just depends on what the ref sees at the moment. But that's a good aggressive move there by Tatum. Takes it in, and he does take that in-between jump shot, just like we talked about early on. But unfortunately, he gets the offensive foul called on him. Yeah. Boy, it looks like it was after the shot. Looks like they could have given him the shot and then called a foul, but. Yeah, like you said, it can go either way. It's a wash, 10 point lead. Green with it. Vince to Gidry. They're having all kinds of trouble getting it inside to Lorenzo Gordon. Plank. They're playing some good defense. Alexander way too strong. Oh, Darren can't catch. The, oh, what a great tip. Tipped it to Stetson. Yeah, good heads up play there by Darren. Southern starts the offense. Brooks in the corner. Stetson had seven first half points. Yeah, good first half for Stetson. I'd like to see the Lucas try to get Josh Warren a couple of Looks, looks at the basket even on the inside to give him some kind of inside presence. Five on the shot clock. Darren, no. A lot of running around, but nothing going towards the basket on that possession. Yeah, the Plank for three. No. And that's what happens when Lorenzo Gordon gets it down low. Yeah, and it was only a matter of time before he got the ball down there. Can only hold him off and seal him off for so long. He seals off Josh Warner, is able to go up, power his body up. Good look at the replay there. Good feed to the open hand. He goes up, gets the contact. Strong guy, puts the basket in. And we've come to our first media timeout of the second half. 15-57 left to go in regulation. Saluki's lead it by eight, 35-27. Greg Armstrong is our man on the sidelines tonight. Gregory, what you got? All right, guys. Well, S or ISU, I'm sorry, came into this year ranked, predicted to be 10th in the Valley. They've definitely outdone themselves. They're up at around the three spot right now. They're hoping to return to glory back in uh, 95, between the years of 95 and 98, when they made the NIT tournament and the NCAA tournament three years in a row. They've already had 16 wins. That's six more than they had last year, where they only had 10 all season. Back to you guys. And Illinois State has guaranteed itself its 30th winning season since entering Division I basketball. Yeah. Not, a, not a bad history yeah. here in Redbird basketball. Yeah, and Coach Moser's doing a great job rebuilding the program and trying to get them back into Valley dominance and national prominence. Lorenzo Gordon at the free throw line. He shoots him at 63%, and he hit it. He's got eight. And he'll be substituted there by Randy Carwell. Let's check in for him. The last time Carwell was in the ball game, Saluki's got some pretty easy layups. 
But Matt Shaw's not in the basketball game now. Falker and Owen are in to play uh, underneath, and so is Mike Dale. Lamar, yes, nice jump hook over Carwell. Yeah, that's a nice jump hook there by Lamar. Good feed by Darren. His assists keep piling up, don't they? Get rid of the corner and plank. Call the block on Lamar. Gidry, boy, he goes hard to the basket, doesn't he? Yeah, it's like I said, he's got a bounce in his step. He's all over the court, dribbling, jumping, running. Darren is here, and there's no question that Lamar did not have position. Yeah, and as you said, when you're on defense, you're on that baseline. You got to use that baseline as an extra defender. Block from behind by Tony Young or Darren. I'm not sure who gets credit yeah, for that one. I think that was Darren grabbed that one from behind. Trey didn't say anything. He understands. Porter did, but but Trey didn't say a word. Ford's got to get it in. Does to Anyekdu. Salukis are up now by nine points. But like I was saying about the Redbirds, they've got to get some help on offense. Gidry can't do it on his own. Three-point attempt is good by Nadu. And as I say it, they do it. Dribble <laughs> penetration. He drew three players to him, and Nadu is wide open at the other end. Falker. Randall needs to take one more step. Walked out of there. Charge. Gidry tried to do a little bit too much that time, and Lamar was set from the time Gidry had the basketball. Yeah, set and waiting for him. Good defensive transition by the Salukis. Off the block shot, they're able to get back on defense and still set up and take the charge. You tell Gidry he's always going at 100 miles per hour. He's looking to get to that basket, find that seam. The Lukies were back on defense that time, though. Fun matchup to watch there, Correll Ford and going against Tony Young. They've both been going at each other, giving each other with a few bumps up and down the court. Dale with it. To DB, oh, he had Alexander on his hip, but Mike Dale didn't clear out in time. Darren, jumper, no. He's missed two in a row, one blocked and one short little jumper. Nobody's picked up Plank. Nobody's picked up Alexander. Yeah, Alex Alexander finally hits one. He had missed probably his first five. So a shooter like that, he gets a few opportunities. He's going to can it eventually. And it, it was 35-25. Now it's 37 to 34. Nine to two run by the Redbirds. Brooks with it. Lob to Lamar. Stepped out of bounds or a foul. They call the foul on Ford. Khalif Ford called for the foul. Yeah, just an update on some Valley scores. Creighton is trailing Wichita State at the half. Wichita leads 38 to 31. Bradley trails Evansville 34 to 22. Drake is trailing Northern Iowa 36 to 32. And of course we got the Salukis here against the Redbirds 37 34. And all those are in the second half. Brooks to Lamar. Darren wide open look from three. Yes. Darren Brooks for three. He's got nine. And when he's had the open shot this evening, he's candid. When he's had to go off the dribble and almost create it, he has, it hasn't been as easy for him. But the open shots, he's doing a great shot in making those. His 20th three of the year. Way to give the Salukis a little bit of separation where the Redbirds are right on their heels trying to make a little bit of comeback. Ready to give them a little bit of breathing room. Ford. Which, nice strip by Tony Young. Tony's going to take it all the way to the hoop, I guarantee it. Oh, he couldn't get it off the backboard, but he's going to shoot two. Real nice step-in move by Tony Young. Yeah, good steal there. 
Just like I said, when I talked to him earlier this, earlier this week, he was saying, hey, when, I get it, when I'm on the bench, I get a chance to look at these guys. You can see the steal here as he slides past the defender, draws a little bit of contact. Just misses it to get the three-point play. But he was saying, hey, when I'm on the bench, I get a chance to look at the defense and wear on these guys. When I come in, I get a chance to wear on them and, and uh, impose myself in the game. He's an 85% free throw shooter. He nails that one. Lead back up to seven. Yes, Vince Green, Green back in with Lorenzo Gordon. Yeah, so just like that, where the Redbirds have went on a nice run to cut it to three. Darren Brooks hits an open jump shot. They get a steal. Two free throws here. Back up to seven now. Could be as many as eight. It's a game of runs. Tony misses the second one. Randall. Oh, they call it on Randall. Both guys jumping. Yeah, that's that's a little bit of a Ooh, shaky that's call. a tough foul. Yeah, both guys going up for the rebound there. Tough, tough foul to get there. Yeah, and as, as, they, as they both go up the court, Gordon and Randall, they both kind of grin at each other and say, hey, I don't even know what kind of call that was. Just a little bit of aggressive play. Refs decided to call it a foul, though. Smokies lead by seven. And Porter Mosier has to call time as Vince Green Got all tied up yes. with Tony Young. So yes. another 30 second timeout and the defense is causing some timeouts to be called in this one. Yeah, both ends of the court. Tony Webb there. Tony Young, excuse me, caught uh, Vince Green over there with his arms out. Locked him into that trap over there on the corner. Vince Green had nowhere to go ahead to call the timeout. Some other scores. Number one, Illinois is dominating Penn State 65 to 40 with 13 minutes to go in the second half. Florida beat Mississippi. Florida number 24 in the country beat Mississippi 90 to 53. Want to have a say a special hello to John and Kay Dozier and the Dozier party back in the WSIU studios tonight and for First Southern Bank for hosting a Saluki basketball party with WSIU TV. Hello again to John and Kay Dozier and the folks with First Southern Bank back at the studios of WSIU. Here we go. It's down to Lorenzo. Kick it to Gidry. Traveled with a basketball turnover. Looks like Trey caught a little bit of a wet spot there. Have somebody wipe that up. And nobody's made any movement on the floor, so it's going to stay wet. <laughs> Make sure Tony doesn't slip when he goes to get the ball. You know where not to go on the floor. <laughs> so uh, that timeout was uh, a wasted one for the Redbirds. And you hate to waste timeouts. Brooks. To Tony. Tony pull up shot. Good for two. Tony His confidence level on those pull ups, you've just seen it grow the last couple of years. Yeah. It's, that, that's what he was saying. He was just saying more playing time and then the confidence the coaches put in him saying, hey, don't be scared to shoot it. When you get out there, go straight up. Feel confident in your shot. Score should be 43 34. Slukies lead by nine. Slukies lead by six. This screen feels confident with that three. It's such a large part of basketball, Mike, is the confidence aspect. And you can be out there, if you're not playing and you only get limited playing time, you're not going to have that confidence that you would have. When a little bit of confidence makes a much better basketball player. Scores 43-37 in favor of the Salukis. Randall with it to Tony. Tony Young pull-up jumper again over Vince Green. Tony Young. Confidence with a capital C. 45-37 the score now. They're going to call Tony with the hold. That'll be three on Tony Young. Salukis lead it by eight. 45 to 37. We've come to a media timeout. 45-37. We'll be back after this. Dogs lead it by eight. It was six at halftime. They sustained one run by the Redbirds and built the lead back up to eight. After the foul by Tony Young, it was his third. It was the sixth team foul, so the Redbirds will be in the bonus from here on out. Actor in this one. He has a dunk and a free throw. And the dunk was. Replay. Falker going high. Oh, that's Stetson. And Stetson is out on the court. 
Ed Thompson the Saluki trainer administering to Stetson. He's talking to Ed now. Here's oh it's just out of your picture but you know what happened he banged his head hard and probably right you know it must have happened up in the air yeah it looked like maybe he, he might have got, got an elbow yeah hitting his his face or his nose area because it didn't did, look like his did, head didn't he, look like his head caromed off the uh, off the hardwood there he did not hit his head on the floor it looked like now that it was something that happened in the air on the play during the block yeah it kind of brings back memories of last year in the Valley Tournament where Brad Korn got hit with an elbow and he was laid out for a little while so see what's uh, here. Yes he got hit by Trey Guidry right with his wrist right smack dab in the middle of the forehead. He's up on his knees now that's a very good sign. And he just got knocked cold. Yeah, when you get hit in the nose there. Karate a... chop, <laughs> inadvertent karate chop by Trey Guidry. And Stetson just went flat on the floor, and we thought it was his head that got hit from behind, but no, he got hit right across the bridge of his nose. He's okay. And he gets a nice round of applause from the Saluki and the Illinois State fans here tonight. Yeah, good to see that great sportsmanship, even in a Porter Mosier comes out and checks on him and says hey doing all right good to see that good sportsmanship one, by the arena and there by the coach Brooks comes in to replace Stetson who got his bell rung shot clock is at 21 because possession was not lost and it's an eight point lead for the Salukis Dale, Falker, Brooks, Tatum, and Owen in the basketball game. And Mike Dale gets some quality minutes tonight for Southern Illinois. Green hands it off to Gordon, who scores. And Lamar Owen thought that he may have taken a charge from Vince Green on that play. So we're back to where we were at halftime. Six point lead for Southern. Yeah, just about the halfway mark of the second half. 10 minutes, 30 seconds to play. Lukey's travel to Kent State Saturday. That'll be televised on ESPN2. And the Redbirds have fallen back into the 2 3 zone defense. They've got to follow. They've got to find Tatum wherever he goes. It's more like a matchup zone, isn't it? Now they, yeah. now they break into a trapping. Tatum up. No. Yeah, that was a tough look there. He had Lorenzo Gordon on his, on his left side. Green with it to Gidry, the handoff. Down to Lorenzo. Brooks an easy steal. See if Alexander fouls him. No. Darren Brooks. I saw that coming from over here, so you knew Darren had it. Yeah. Gidry back with three. Too strong. Rebound by Randall Falker. And Gidry usually doesn't miss those three, but he's played a lot of minutes tonight. The legs yeah. are the first things to go. Yeah, legs first thing. He's been playing hard. He's been getting batted all around the court. Sometimes you get those open looks. Not as easy as it looks when you've been running up and down all night. Lamar to Mike Dale. Here comes Tatum off the pick. Back to Lamar. Short jumper. No. Alexander did a nice job. Yeah. It's hard to check Darren Brooks off of off of the offensive boards. Yeah, when you when you're when you're outmatched physically, you got to use those fundamentals, and he used his fundamentals that time. Good box out on Darren. Didn't allow him to get the rebound. Gidry a train charge again. <laughs> Gidry a runaway train. That's what he looked like. Yeah, the one thing that you can see about what Gidry's doing, he's got great energy, but he's not getting his things going in the flow of the offense. Normally, you would get your offense out of a pass, one dribble shot, you get a you know a penetration, but he's coming around screens, he's dribbling in a circle, he's hitting the lane. So when you get all that action, especially against an aggressive defense like the Salukis, that is not going to have many open seams. Here goes the replay. Lamar steps right in right there. When you've got an aggressive defense like the Salukis, they're going to fill those holes up quicker than you see them. So it looks open, but they're closing them up, and especially when you're running around and doing all that extra activity that Gidry's doing. Tony Young, Matt Shaw, and Josh Warren back into the game for the Slukies. Darren working on plank. 
He thinks he can get a shot against him anytime. Tony, a long three in and out. Shaw with the board. Nobody checked off Matt Shaw. And he's got double figures with 10. Six of them on offensive rebounds and stick backs. Yeah, and all of them are in the same place on either side of the basket. Plank for three. No. Gordon is so strong. Yeah, he's, a, he's a load down there on the block. And it looked like Josh had position, and Lorenzo snuck in around him and got the rebound, and Gordon will go to the free throw line and shoot two. It was the seventh team foul on the Salukis. Yeah, Josh found himself a little bit flat-footed there. Lorenzo was able to just leap, jump over him just a little bit more to grab that rebound. Step to the line, looking for his 11th point of the evening. No good. He's a 63 percenter at the line. Southern by 10, 49-39, looking for their 21st win of the year. Gordon hit the second. Nine-point lead. Pressure has not bothered Southern at all. Brooks with it. They had the notion Jamal. to shoot it, but it closed up. Jamal had a wide open three. And on the shot clock to Josh Tatum. Three. It's too strong. Foul on Matt over the back, I believe. Yes. Yeah, but as you see with the zone, they got a good shot there. They hit it to Warren, who was in the center of the court. He kicks it out to Tatum on the left wing. Good open shot for him. That's, so that's the way that the Salukis do want to attack the 3-2 zone that the Redbirds are playing. 7.46 left to go in the ball game. It's the Salukis by nine. We'll be back after this. Welcome back to Redbird Arena. The dogs lead it by nine. It's 49 to 40 with 746 left to go in the ballgame. Support for Saluki basketball brought to you in part by First Cellular. Greg Armstrong is on the sidelines. Greg, what do you got? Well, guys, I was standing down by the Saluki sideline, and I've kind of been watching Stetson since he's gone back to the bench. He's remained pretty emotionless. He's kind of just been sitting there, kind of, I think, trying to regather himself. I'm not sure whether he'll be going back in the game or not. I didn't really hear anything. But I think he seems to be doing all right at this point. So back to you guys. Thank you, Greg. Southern could use Stetson down the stretch if he's able. If he's able, he will be in, I guarantee it. But they're not going to take any chances for somebody who was most likely knocked out. Yeah. And, and, and even if he's not able to make it, if he needs to recoup and get himself back, the, the Salukis can allow it because of the guard rotation that they have. They've got Tony Young, who's been playing a good, solid ball game so far. Tatum and Darren Brooks, they should be able to hold it down. Stetson talking with Jack Owens and Shane Hawkins. Plank is at the free throw line. He's a 67 percenter. And he made it. This is the way for Illinois State to get back in the basketball game at the line with obviously no time running off the clock. And he hit them both. Cuts the lead down to seven. 49 to 42. Remember, it was six at the half. Darren with it. To Tony. When Josh is up high, they double team with Lorenzo Gordon. Nice pass to Matt Shaw. Wow. Great feed from Josh Warren, who is as good a passer as Southern has. Yeah, good pass there. Shaw has the, oaks, the, the feed hand open, catches it. Easy layup for Matt. And the way Matt's scored and where he's getting it. Boy, can, can Gordon pin somebody? Yeah, and he does exactly what Shaw just did on the other end. Puts the good open hand up, gets the feed, drops in, easy layup. Lead it by seven. Do the Redbirds have another run? Josh, no good. Rebound to Alexander. Yeah, I'd like to say that's Josh's first shot at tempo of the evening. That wasn't really in the flow, but sometimes you're kind of in the game and you say, hey, I haven't gotten any shots yet. You know, that may have been one of those kind of shots. Stetson's going to check in next opportunity. Three pointer, no good. Rebound to Jamal Tatum. Dogs by seven. Illinois State in a man-to-man. 
Brooks curls. Pass to Josh. Nice block by Onyekyu. To Vince Green, pull up jumper, no. Josh fouls playing. And that's four on Josh Warren. Well, I'll send the Redbirds to the free throw line. And as you said, that's really the only way for them to get back. There goes the replay here. Josh goes up, gets that blocked. Got a lot of a left arm, too. Yeah, a little looked like a foul there. And he comes down, maybe a little bit out of frustration, goes over the back there on Plank, send him to the free throw line again. Which is what Dilligard did on Darren in the first half with no call. So Josh thought he could get away with it this time. <laughs> Carwell comes in for Lorenzo Gordon, who's probably only going to sit out till the four minute timeout. Gidry coming back in as well. Our stat shows that Plank is zero for zero for free throws, but he just made a couple a few minutes ago to get his first two points. Yep. So these will be his third and fourth free throws of the contest. He hit a layup earlier as well, a follow layup on an offensive rebound. So he's now got five. And it's back to a six point Saluki lead, 51 to 45. And he missed it. Stats don't lie. And we're just like we were when we came out of the half. Six point lead for the Saluki. No better, no worse. Stetson back in. Tatum, wide open three, got it. Jamal Tatum with three. Point basket by number three, Jamal Tatum. Yeah. Stop and play there. Looks like he may have a little bit of a cut on the leg or something. No, they're saying he doesn't, so he's okay. Jamal's got 11. Yeah, and Carwell coming in for Plank. Look at the replay. Jamal comes off that screen there, and nobody squares up better than him. When he gets that ball, he squares his body, which is one of the fundamentals of shooting. He squares that body, then elevates, then releases. Great jump shot. Saluki's back up by nine, 54 to 45. Gidry to Green. And Gidry has pretty much been in the bottle this. Nice pass. Good foul. Anytime he can foul Dillegard, it's a good foul. Yeah, I think that's his down low buddy Carwell that they fouled on that You're one. right, it's Carwell, my bad. But I think it's just the same fouling him <laughs> will be just about the same as fouling Dillegard. But I was talking about Gidry, pretty much been bottled up this second half, had a good offensive performance in the first half, but this half he's been a little out of control, two charges, and uh, I don't think he scored this half. Carwell is a 46% free throw shooter. He's five out of 12 now for the season. So anytime you can foul him or Dillegard down low, it's a good foul. Missed them both. Rebound to Stetson. Dogs with a nine point lead and the basketball. 520, clock running, left in the basketball game. Three right now would be sweet. Get the lead up to double digits. Force Illinois State to do things they don't want to do. Tatum. So quick. Faulkner top of the key. Five on the shot clock. Shaw's got to shoot it. No shot. Yeah. Darren had to see that. Darren didn't see it. Yeah, didn't see it. And sometimes that's what happens when you, you've got the lead, clock running down, you get a little complacent, you, you, you're, you're fine and passing the ball around, and not, but you still got to attack the basket and, and realize that you still got to go up. Alexander back in for Onedu. Oh, and here we go. We got a movement in the valley. Creighton Blue Jays up on the Wichita State Shockers, 58 to 50. With seven, seven minutes. and a half minutes to go in the basketball game. Look at DB on the steal to Tatum. Fouled by Carwell. And Southern will go to the free throw line. So if the Slukies can hang on to this one and Creighton can beat Wichita, which would be a season sweep because they beat them in Omaha, Southern would have a one game lead as we see the replay with Jamal getting hammered by Carwell. Yeah, that would be sweet for the Salukis. Of course, they want to handle their business here, but if they get this win here and then they get the news that uh, Creighton's able to upset Wichita State, Good news for them in the conference standings. Jamal, how about for a shooter's roll? <laughs> Two bounces and it goes down. And again, I keep getting Dillegard and Carwell mixed up. The fouls on Greg Dillegard. Tatum hits the free throw. He's got 12. 
He's got 13. Leads 11, 56, 45. And the dogs have a comfortable lead at this point. But they do want to continue to keep the defensive up, defensive pressure up. Alexander with it to Gidry. Shaw doing a great job on the double teams. Way over to Alexander. Can't get the shot off. 14 on the shot clock. Vince Green. Fade away. No rebound to Stetson. Oh, that's great defense there by the Salukis. They did not allow defense. any seams in the defense. They recovered well, even on the two-person skip pass. Stetson was out there. Great defense on that possession there by the Salukis. Tatum with it. Just ahead of our media timeout. Yeah, and look for the Salukis to milk some clock, take it down under 10, and then get into their offense. Tatum, look at him blow by everybody. Oh, it didn't go. Shaw kicks it back out. Use the shot clock. Very, very smart move by the freshman, Matt Shaw. Knew he could have had a layup, but they'll use it in the 35 seconds of the clock. Yeah, that's basketball IQ there. He grabs the rebound. Could have gone up, just like you said, but he thinks about it again. Hey, we can pull it out and use another 35 seconds off the clock when it's closer to another victory. Listen to the SIU fans. Bucker laughing because he had it and then it just slipped out of the way. Foul by Jamal Tatum. We'll come to our media timeout. 2.52 left to go in the basketball game. Salukis with an 11 point lead. 56 45. We'll be right back. Southern's 2.52 away from guaranteeing themselves at least a share for first place in the Valley. And the last score that we had. From Wichita was the Shockers losing by eight to Creighton, 58 to 50. So yeah. if that holds up and this holds up, it's going to be a happy bus trip home for these Salukis. Trey Gidry will go to the free throw line. He gets two. He's a 78 percenter. And he made it. Let's see what kind of pressure Illinois State has on now. They still have. A foul to give before putting the Salukis in the bonus. Bray made a vote. Nine point lead. Full court pressure. Just does get the ball over the timeline, and now Southern sets it up. Not the textbook way to beat the press, but oh. we'll take it. <laughs> Illinois State's going to try to play good defense here. And Southern wants Darren Brooks to post up Vince Green. Shaw. Five on the shot clock. Stetson's got to put up a prayer. No, did it hit anything? It did not. Yeah, it didn't. But what happened there was that they, they, beat, they beat the press. Matt Shaw had the opportunity. He had Falker down low. That was the attack that they needed to get the basket out of that possession. He didn't go at it aggressively, pulled it back out, forced Stetson to put up a tough shot. No, Matt needed to shoot the ball. He had a wide open 12 footer. If he misses, Falker's right there for the rebound. Gidry takes. So he kicks it to Alexander, who misses. And did Brooks get the ball, and he does. Yeah, talk about a guy who's having a tough shooting day. For a guy who can put it up and make some shots, Greg Alexander's having a tough time. I think he's only made one of his attempts. Kick it to Jamal. Southern could use it. They'll kick it out now. There's a grab by Alexander, and that's just the 16 foul. So Southern is not in the bonus yet, but it's, it's bonus time, folks, where Illinois State, the only way they can win this basketball game now is to foul and hope the, hope the Salukis don't make the free throws. But Potter, or Hosier just says don't foul. Play one more round of good defense here. Southern gets it back. 20 on the shot clock. Minute 35 now on the game clock. We've got Dillard guarding Stetson. Looks like a mismatch to me. I get the ball to Stetson when you get ready to get into your offense. Or you've got Vince Green down there on Matt Shaw. Either one. 
And a foul on Lorenzo Gordon. Porter Mosier says not with six seconds on the shot clock. Yeah, so many times that happens. Coaches say, hey, don't foul on this possession. You guys play good defense, you get down to the clock, and then you foul with six seconds, like I said. Defeats the whole purpose of what the coach is trying to do with the defensive philosophy. So if the Salukis make free throws, they win this basketball game. Jamal Tatum at the free throw line. Made his last three free throws. Shot is up, and he missed it. So Southern's got to make free throws. Yeah, and, and with the three-point ability of, of the Redbirds, they've got the chance to get themselves back into the game. They haven't shot well at all this afternoon, this evening, excuse me. But they've got the ability to do it. There's Alexander. Yeah, and, and just like I said, they've got the ability to do it. They've got some great three-point shooters in Alexander and Gidry and Vince Green. They haven't shot it well early, but they... When you're a shooter, you keep putting them up. You don't let any misses deter you. And Alexander is a uh, case in point there. 30 second timeout for Porter Mosier. He's going to bring in Khalif Ford, Nadu, and Greg Dillicard for defensive pressure in that backcourt. That's their, their quick lineup. Here's Alexander, almost NBA territory, and he knocks it down. He's about two of nine. Two of nine, yeah. So he's he's about due to make one of those. Tony Young came in for Matt Shaw. So Southern has Josh Warren, Brooks, Tatum, Young, and Stetson in the basketball game. Yeah, four guards along with Josh Warren there. Darren can run the baseline. Dillegard will guard the ball out of bounds. He goes deep, goes deep, goes deep. Josh is wide open. For two. Eight point lead. Three from Gidry. No. Brooks gets the board. Foul. Who gets who's gonna call it first? Is Darren going to the free throw line? Can you hear the Saluki fans? They are roaring their approval in the upper echelon of Redburn Arena. Foul was on Lorenzo Gordon, his third. And DB will go to the free throw line to shoot one of the bonus. It's not over yet. Southern has to make free throws. Yeah, but like I said, if they make, if they make their free throws, the game is theirs. Here's Darren Brooks. Shot. No. That's two in a row. Missed. Gidry. Going to take it in. Reverse. No. Tipped out. Alexander for three, yes. Alexander hit three. And he fouls Stetson. Yeah, and, and again, as I pointed out, when you've got good three-point shooters, <laughs> the game is never out of reach. But I know what's frustrating to the Illinois State fans is, why all of a sudden does Alexander get hot? He's had wide open looks all game long, and it's only at panic time that he hits his shots. Yeah. You, you, Five point it's game. Hard, hard to explain it. Stetson again, just one of the bonus here. Not good. It's his free throw. Stetson's got eight. First points of the second half. That makes it 59 to 53. Six point difference. 41 seconds. To play. And the next one's the big one because it makes it three possessions. Got it. Three possession game, 40 seconds left. Green with it. Pops up a three, way long. Stetson gets the rebound. And he's fouled. <laughs> Great rebound yeah, by that, number 25. Yeah, that's a good The rebound. senior who all yesterday and today just kept telling the guys we got five left we've got five left and Tony Young in your interview said what would make this season complete win in the valley for the seniors doing it for the seniors and that was something brought in by coach Weber and it's uh, carried through to coach Painter and now Chris Lowry you win it for the seniors yeah, Stetson started off a great first half got hit earlier got knocked out comes in and looks like he could be the finisher the closer here for the Saluki. He nails these free throws hit his last two grabs the big rebound puts him right back on the line. He will get two now double bonus time. Mm -hmm. I'd love to get another up 
update for Wichita. Stetson hit it. That puts Stetson in double figures with 10. Tatum has 13. Brooks has 11. Shaw has 12. Four players in double figures. Yeah, you can't complain about that. Up and down for Stetson. Lead is nine. You know Gidry's gonna pop. And he dribbles it right out of bounds. Talk about a guy who was in the game mentally, but just had a tough one with the defense that the Salukis played on him all night. Trey Gidry, as you can see him, uh, he's not gonna go out. He's gonna stay on the court, but he's had a tough evening. The Saluki defenders have been on him from the time the ball tipped off. Tatum needs to go long. There he goes. <laughs> Tipped it right to Darren Brooks. And Darren fouled by Dana Ford. <laughs> Dana Ford tipped it right to Darren Brooks, and he'll get two free throws. That was right handed by Stetson. He's a lefty, folks. He hauled that basketball. <laughs> yeah, and you called it out, said they need to go long. Just as you said, Darren Brooks broke long. Darren's first one is good. He's got 12. Alexander and Plank back in. Ford and Dillagar and Nadu sit down. Ten point game. Southern one up by 12 in Carbondale. And with the lead that they came out with to start the second half, as Darren cans that second free throw, they, they never relinquished the lead. They held off the run by ISU, two runs by ISU actually, and that's what good teams do. They finish teams off and hold off runs. Alexander hits the three. He's got 12, but it's academic now. Tatum foul by Vince Green. Talk about a guy who's going to kick himself after the game. Greg <laughs> Alexander's made three three-pointers in a row. And, and what I said before, Porter Mosier did the same. I mean, he looked like, you know, where's that been all game? Yeah, and, and these have been under heavy pressure. The ones he got early on were wide open looks. He couldn't hit anything. So, you know, go figure that. I'm sure he'll he'll be talking to himself after the game. <laughs> Tatum hits the free throw. He's got 14. He's the leading scorer in the basketball game. Got them both. Nine seconds left. Chalk up number 21 for the Salukis as Vince Green hits the three. <laughs> Clock ticks down. Tony Young will hold the basketball. Chalk up number 21 of the year for the Salukis. They're now 12 and 3 in the Missouri Valley Conference, guaranteed at least a share of first place tonight. Illinois State had a three game homestand they were really looking forward to. Folks, they dropped all three games to fall to eight and seven in the league, 16 and nine overall. And they've got a tough road to hoe now down the stretch to uh, be in the top six in the Missouri Valley Conference as they have a tough schedule down the stretch. Jamal Tatum led the way for the Salukis with 15 points as Southern wins it by a score of 66 to 59. Let's go to Greg Armstrong with Saluki head coach Chris Lowry. Lamar All right, Coach, in this game, ISU really hung tough in the second half. They really seemed to make a, make a statement. They hung around with you guys. We talk about your offense and your defense stepping up when they needed to, not allowing Illinois State to make it any closer than six points. Well, I'm not pleased with the free throws. I think that's the biggest thing. We're a very good free throw shooting team. We didn't shoot them well um, in the guts of the game. We got to get better at that. But we did some things positive on both ends of the floor. Just happy to get a victory on the road. All right, and now I had heard earlier that Wichita State was losing. So what's the uh, what's the momentum going into these last couple weeks in the Valley? We're just going to take care of our own business. We don't care what anybody else does. We didn't panic when you know everybody else did. Uh, we just stayed the course. You know, we just win ball games. All right, good luck the rest of your coach. Thank you, Greg. And while he says he doesn't care what Wichita does as long as they win, it doesn't hurt if the Shockers lose and the Salukis continue winning on the basketball front. Yeah, there's a couple cliches that come along with sports. You know, we don't care what the other team does. Hey, we're going to give 110% one day at a time. So, you know, some of those things. All right, we want to remind you that tonight's basketball game was brought to you in part by First Cellular of Southern Illinois, by Old National Bank, the Southern Illinois Collegiate Common Market, Vogler Motor Company, Banterra Bank, Gentry Couch Insurance and Investments, 710 Bookstore and the Slukey Connection, and by your Anheuser-Busch distributors, B&G Venegoni Distributing, Golden Eagle Distributing, and Venegoni Orel Distributing, LLC, 
and SI Cosmetic and Family Dentistry. Once again, the final score tonight, 66-59. The Salukis win it to wrap up their 21st win of the year. More importantly, their 12th in the conference. They are in first place. And for the moment, a half game ahead of Wichita, whose game is probably not yet over in, uh, in Shockerland against the uh, Creighton Blue Jays. Southern put four players in double figures, Tatum, Hairston, Brooks, and a big night by Matt Shaw with 12 tonight. Yeah, good all-around performance for the dogs, and when you've got four players scoring in double figures, can't go wrong with that. Great performance on both ends of the court, good win for the Salukis. I'd like to thank our crew for the great work they've done all season long, as this is our last broadcast of Saluki basketball this year. A huge thank you to all of our sponsors as well, and once again, a thanks to Brandon Moore and Greg Armstrong for their work tonight. Once again, led by Jamal Tatum with 15 points, Salukis win at 66 to 59. So